Sadiq Khan, why are you expanding the ULEZ in Greater London at the height of a cost of living crisis? Well, the decision to expand uh, the ultra emission zone to all of London was a difficult one. It wasn't an easy one, but I think it's a vital decision and it's the right one. Let me tell you why. Uh, we now know the evidence in relation to the consequences of air pollution. It leads to around 4,000 premature deaths a year. It leads to children having stunted lungs forever. Adults with a whole host of health issues from asthma to cancer, dementia to heart disease. We also now know that one of the most effective ways to reduce air pollution is with the ULEZ. How do we know that? In central London, we've seen a reduction of around 50% of toxicity, mm. uh, nitrogen dioxide. Also, a third fewer children being admitted to hospital with air pollution-related illnesses. When we expanded it to inner London, we saw a further reduction of 21% in nitrogen dioxide. Now, children going to 1,400 schools are breathing clean air. Yep. Here's the problem. In outer London is where the 10 boroughs with the largest amount of premature deaths are. It's in outer London where two-thirds of uh, Londoners with respiratory issues uh, live. And it's in outer London where 24 of the 30 GP practices with the worst respiratory problems are. I think clean air is all right. And just like people in central London and in London have and seen the benefits, question your figures, they should be out of London. The Tories question those figures and say it's a money-making exercise. Let me deal with that. So the same experts uh, that produced the figure that shows around 4,000 premature deaths a year, the same experts that have shown ULOS to be effective are used by the government. Mm. The government commissioned these uh, experts to do work for them, and these experts told the government yeah. that between 28,000 and 36,000 people die prematurely in our country as a consequence of air pollution. If these experts are good enough for the government, they're good enough for City Hall. Do you understand the anger about people living on the outside, on the, the edge of Great London? They now can't cross the road or drive across the road to go and get some basic services. And we're seeing some real, uh, real frustration on GB News today on, on the channel. I fully understand the concerns, not just those in outer London may have, but those outside of London. Mm. Uh, they get no have. help at all from your scrappage scheme. Well, I've been responding to those concerns for those people I'm responsible for in uh, at London. So the government uh, published an air quality directive. Uh, uh, requiring cities and regions to sort their air out because of consequences of air pollution. The government uh, supported cities around the country and those outside cities with clean air zones like Birmingham and mm -hmm. Bristol and uh, Bath. And what I'm saying to people outside of London is your councils have spent more than a million pounds taking me to court unsuccessfully. Why don't you work with me and your council mm -hmm. to lobby the government to give those in the home counties the same sort of support the government's given those outside Birmingham, those outside Bristol, those outside Bath. Would you apologise to people who for, for given them this big charge on, on getting around, just going to work, you'll pay £12.50 £12. 50 suddenly? I just, I'm, I'm always sorry for anybody who's uh, you know, suffering adverse consequences because of uh, our policies. But at the same time, I've got to be honest with uh, people and say I've been meeting bereaved mums who've lost their children because of air pollution. I've been meeting a paediatrician today who works with mums who are pregnant, suffering the ill consequences because of air pollution, and babies who are born suffering the ill consequences. I've met today a doctor who runs an asthma uh, clinic, but also I've visited Great Ormond Street, yeah. the inpatient ward at the Children's Evelina Hospital, and met scientists, health practitioners, and uh, others. That's why I'm angry yeah. that the government's letting down London and the South East. Is now the time? I mean, you say, you're saying your book here, Breathe, Tackling the Climate Change Emergency. You, you, so you say when the going gets tough, the climate gets forgotten. But, you, but that's because people have to, have to pay, feed, their, feed their families. and They can't really afford to worry about the climate when it's difficult. Let me deal with that. In 2017, I brought in the precursor to the ULES, which is the toxicity charge. I was told to delay that because the time wasn't right because of Brexit and so forth. In 2019, I brought in the ULES in central London. I was told to delay it yeah. uh, because of difficulties in central uh, uh, London. Uh, but actually, what, we've, what we know is that central London ULES has led to a reduction of almost 50% of uh, toxic air, but also a third for your children being mm. admitted to hospital. Imagine if we delayed. In 2021, I expanded the ULES to the north and south uh, circular. Also, people were saying to uh, delay. We've seen a further reduction uh, in nitrogen dioxide by 21%, but also children going to 1,400 schools. You're quite, you're quite alone politically, aren't you? Because uh, uh, Keir Starmer is, is, is worried about the impact on the, on the by-election that's been in South Ryslip, aren't they? So there's a concern that you're out there on your own with, your, you know, with, with an agenda which you know, is praiseworthy, but also might, might damage votes at the next election and damage livelihoods now. Yeah, well, let me just finish. But so there's been calls to delay, 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 all four iterations of the uh, UNOS. Because we've uh, you know, taken action, we've seen the progress in uh, London. But let me be quite clear in relation to the issue of uh, uh, delay. 
We know the evidence of consequences of air pollution. We know there's a policy that is a game changer in reducing air pollution. I think to stand idly by would be uh, wrong. And I'll you know, be quite clear in relation to the public health benefits of our policy, but also the adverse consequences of air pollution. And by the way, if you're driving a non-compliant car, you're breathing in mm. the, the toxins uh, and reducing your life expectancy. If you've got two kids in the back, it's affecting them uh, as well. So actually, this is a policy which the government would be supporting by giving us financial support to give more mm. people in the home counties that support they need. Why do you say that anti-vaxxers, COVID deniers, conspiracy theorists and Nazis are part of the campaign against you, Les? Well, I went to a People's Question Time in Ealin, uh, and outside that question time, there were lots of uh, decent Londoners and those outside of London mm. who had concerns around the ULES. But I also saw banners, uh, and you can't deny what you see on a banner, mm. banners outside uh, People's Question Time, people okay. latching on. To the but you understand concerns. the basic concern, do you, from people, ordinary, the ordinary people who are not the Nazis and the rest? Well, oh, listen, yeah. I've been responding since I first made the announcement. Evidence of that is we've had, in, uh, <coughs> after I announced the scheme in November last year, in January, the biggest scrappage scheme this country's ever seen without a penny of support from the government, supporting in particular low-income yeah. families, those who are disabled, uh, charities and micro-businesses who employ less than 10 people. Because I'm listening to the concerns you referred to, uh, you know, in July, we said every single family in London who receives child benefit, more than 800,000 families will receive financial uh, support. And because I'm listening, uh, I've announced uh, a further expansion of the scheme with more financial support, £160 million now. Yes. So every single person in London who may have a non-compliant car, motorbike, van or minibus receives uh, support. But the good news... Is it enough though, 2,000 quid? Well, here's the good news. The good news is, firstly, uh, nine out of ten cars seen driving out of London are compliant. Uh, uh, around half of London households don't own a car. 70% of the lowest income households don't uh, own a car. But I checked with Auto Trader last week. They've got about 5,000 cars for sale, all MRT'd, all nice. road taxed uh, for less than £2,000. And, and the week than... before, okay. there were 6,000. The week before that, okay. there were 5,000. There are cars available. I'm not saying, by the way, <laughs> you've got to buy a new car or an electric car. What I'm saying is, look, if you, you, know, you want to be driving in uh, at London, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's important to be cognizant yeah. and aware of the consequences of you driving a non-compliant car. The Prime Minister, Richard Sunak, gets a hard time for getting a helicopter around the place. And, and you get to work in a, in a high-spec Range Rover. What, what is the impact of you or of you, Les? Or are you not affected at all by it? Well, I, I, I've come today using public transport like I do most yeah. uh, uh, days. I walk, cycle, use public transport wherever I can. But also I'm somebody who, like the Prime Minister, has police protection. He rides the helicopter <laughs> uh, because, uh, uh, you know, for other reasons, not because he needs police protection. Well, he's busy. He's uh, well, so am I. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. And so And by the way, so is Prime Minister Blair and Prime Minister Brown yeah, yeah. and Prime Minister Thatcher. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see them riding a the helicopter, uh, you know, enjoying themselves like uh, the Prada Sunak does. <laughs> okay, okay. Is this a precursor to a pay paper mile scheme? No, not at all. Let, let, we can. let me be quite clear about, uh, uh, about this uh, mischief put out by the uh, uh, Tories is, uh, look, it's no secret that this government, uh, the former mayor, TfL uh, and so forth, have been looking into mm. uh, the issue of, uh, you know, road user charging. And there's, uh, the main reason why they've looked at smart technology is because the revenues raised from mm. fuel Before. goes down. And so when Boris Johnson, remember him? When Boris Johnson <laughs> was uh, mayor, his mayor's transport strategy talked uh, about road user charging. When Rishi Sunak was chancellor, he asked his officials in the Treasury to look into a national road pricing uh, scheme. Yeah. Let me be quite clear, as long as I'm mayor, there will be no, uh, you know... And the next term as well, mile. both, if you Absolutely. win in May? As long as I'm mayor, there's no paper mile uh, uh, scheme. But uh, the government are looking yeah. into uh, this for the reasons I've and said. Would you apologise for the upheaval caused by today? There's lots of concern about that out there, about this, this extra charge bit to get to work. Uh, I've spent most of this morning with uh, uh, health experts, paediatrician, a GP who works uh, and runs a health uh, clinic with a bereaved mum who lost her daughter directly because of uh, air pollution and many uh, others. Uh, they were tearful mm. when they were telling me how grateful they were for the fact that after today, five million more Londoners will be breathing uh, cleaner air. I'm going to carry on listening, though, to those Londoners who've got concerns around uh, the ultra low emission zone expansion. And the evidence from the central London at ULES, the inner London at ULES, is I continue to review, monitor, yeah. uh, and you know, support more Londoners if they need it. And just finally, do you think one day people will thank you for this? That across, even, your, even your critics today will say, actually, Sadiq Khan did a good job. There. Well, there's been lots of people today who've been thanking me. But even just, critics, just, the ones uh, who are concerned, will they thank you one day? Well, uh, I remember as an MP, and, and I know you were in the lobby, uh, you know, uh, in 2006-07, mm. when the Labour government 
uh, banned smoking in enclosed public spaces. You'll remember the noise being made uh, then, uh, you know, uh, and uh, now people wouldn't think about reintroducing smoking in pubs. You study history. In the 1950s, a brave Tory government passed the Clean Air Act, which meant power stations were removed from the centre of our cities. Mm-hmm. Palace Power Station, what is now the uh, Tate in the middle of the 19th century, uh, the Great Stink, open mm-hmm. sewers led to thousands of deaths by mm-hmm. cholera. People weren't grateful then to the sewers. When it comes to tackling public ill health, I think you've got to take bold action. Uh, but also when you recognise that actually between 2017 and 2026, the NHS will spend £1.6 billion treating people in a uh, hospital by 2050. That's going to be north of £10 billion. This policy will save lives and save money. Sikhan, thank you.